Welcome to Cape Chronicle. I'm Mike Rennick. Old Town Cape's Executive Director Liz Haynes joins us in the studio to share how Cape Girardeau is planning to celebrate the once-in-a-lifetime solar eclipse as well as some other events coming up soon this spring. Liz, how you doing? Hi, I'm doing great, Mike. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. Yeah, you bet. It's, and there's a lot to lot going on. There's a lot going on. We love this time of year when it's starting to get warmer. People are coming out of hibernation. We can explore our, our community and, and we're excited about some events that are coming up. Absolutely. We mentioned the uh, the eclipse. We'll get to all that uh, here in just a bit. And as you mentioned, springtime, people are ready to get out and about. And there's a lot of things that'll be, be going on. Absolutely. Real quick though, yeah. uh, let's talk about you. Uh, Executive Director of Old Town Cape. How long have you been in that position and, and what got you here. Yeah, you bet. So I have been in the position about four and a half years. I guess it'll be five years in September. Um, so I am born and raised in downtown Cape. Um, my folks and I had three small businesses growing up in the downtown area. Robertson's Photography and what's now the Indie House. We had Robertson's Photography, we had a bed and breakfast, and then my mom actually started Annie Laurie's. Uh, eventually sold it to Laurie, the current owner. So I can speak very authentically to what it's like to be a business owner in downtown Cape because yeah. that was our livelihood growing up. So, um, but I, you know, graduated from high school at Cape Central and then uh, went off to Mizzou and my career kind of launched in St. Louis so I was there for 13 years. Um, I worked at the American Red Cross for five years in fundraising and event planning. Then I transitioned into higher ed. I worked at Maryville University for about eight years. Uh, headed up Kids Rock Cancer, a, a nonprofit associated with the university. Did some alumni relations work um, and, and started a women in leadership program. And then I uh, transitioned over to Washington University in St. Louis. While I was there, I was a fundraiser for the New York City market. So I traveled to New York and, and fundraised from current parents um, and uh, parents of current students and alumni that, that reside there in the Manhattan area. So, um, but then, you know, my, my hometown was calling me back. And yeah. so, uh, you know, my folks are here, have been ever since. I'm really close with my family. And so, um, so decided I wanted to make the move back here. Had a four-year-old at the time. Um, as it all worked out, I started the position the same day she started kindergarten uh, here oh, in wow. Cape. So uh, it's been a fun journey. Uh, about six months into the position, COVID hit. So, you know, that, that brought its challenges. Um, but it was exciting to really kind of, as I was still getting my feet wet with the job, to, to get to know our downtown business owners and to see their resilience through such a difficult, difficult time. You know, we were just trying to make sure that our downtown continued to survive, our businesses sure. survived. But um, I'm proud and excited to say that we not only survived, but we thrived. A lot of our multi-generational businesses saw record years in, in terms of, of revenue wow. um, during that time period, which that really just shows the commitment of our, our local community to to jump in and support our our local businesses, which which makes my job so you know just exciting and it warms my heart, um, keeps me motivated every day to continue to do all of the things we do at Old Town Cape with our downtown revitalization work. Just to, to see that amazing support of the community. I know the answer may be in the name of the organization Old Town Cape, but but what's the mission? What yeah. on a day to day basis? Yeah, what uh, yeah. what are so, you guys working on? In a nutshell, you know we're all about downtown revitalization. Um, so our district is one of the largest Main Street districts in the whole country, actually. Uh, our di the downtown district, the Main Street district, goes from the river up to West End Boulevard and 74 to North Street. So if you think about that district, it encompasses a lot. We have sure. over 300 businesses, over 4,500 residents, and both those numbers are growing all the time, um, which, is, which is exciting just to see all of that growth in our community. So uh, we are a fully accredited Main Street organization, meaning we follow the four um, tenants to, to successful downtown revitalization, the four pillars, um, including design, organization, economic vitality, and promotions. So we do um, 55 events a year, which we're going to be talking about, we're going to be focusing on here shortly. Absolutely. The, the uh, focus of all of these events is to get people to come downtown, because if they're coming downtown, then that's going to touch all the other points of our mission, because then they're going to support our, our downtown businesses. We're going to ring cash registers, because we're going to have all these hundreds, if not thousands of people in our downtown district. We're hoping they're going to go have lunch at a downtown restaurant, shop at one of our retailers, grab coffee at a coffee shop, while they're going to all of these events. So that's the overall purpose of these events, and of course, enriching our community with fun and exciting events as well. Um, we do every, I work very closely with local developers, um, kind of being the intermediary between the developers and the city, making sure that, that things are happening and progressing as much as possible, helping developers um, access tools and resources that can help their, you know, development projects continue on um, and be, you know, financially um, feasible. 
We support our current downtown business owners in a variety of different ways, making sure they can continue to, to thrive um, in our downtown. We do a lot with kind of the overall downtown aesthetic. So if you think about like the banners on the light poles throughout the district, um, we worked with a SEMO um, class, for example, of students that helped design the current banners that you see there. Um, Old Town Capes uh, facilitates all of the Christmas decorations you see in the downtown. So, you know, people come from all across the region to kind of leverage that Hallmark Christmas movie vibe that we help we hope to create and we try to create during during Christmas so we we do that uh, we do litter pickup we do you know all kinds of things that enrich um, our community and, and ensure it continues to thrive for for decades to come because you know Cape Girardeau is the hub of our, our region and there's a direct correlation between the health of a downtown and the health of the entire community so since we're the hub there's really a direct correlation between the health of our downtown and our entire region so a lot of that the work we do really is around economic development economic vitality it's hard to, you know, drive downtown and not see something being done. You know, you've got buildings that are being repurposed, right. you know, remodeled. Right. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, new new shops. There's, right. there's always something right. going, right. and that's got to keep things exciting for you. It, it is really exciting. You know, this spring, in fact, not only do we have all these exciting events to talk about, there is there are so many development projects right now. I bring people in. We do a lot of business recruitment even from, you know, smaller communities or, or bigger communities like St. Louis and, and Paducah and things. And so I take people on driving tours and point out the developments, and they're astounded at a community our size to see how much is happening. You know, we've got the Casino Hotel that's going to be opening up very right. shortly in the spring. Wonderful for our, our local economy. You you know, this is our second downtown hotel. Um, the Buckner's development, three-story, 500 capacity um, project, also going to be phenomenal for getting people to come to our downtown community. Um, we've got both of our historic theaters currently under rehab that sat vacant for decades. I mean, that in itself is, is phenomenal. Absolutely. Um, you know, one has um, already got a, a business, two-story uh, bourbon and bitters will be opening this spring. Um, we've gotten a lot of interest in, in that development, upper level living spaces. Um, that's in the Broadway theater. And the Esquire, um, there's been a lot of interest in that too that's going to be business offices okay. um, loft offices so there's been a lot of interest in leasing those spaces as well um, you know of course SEMO recently you know finished their completely new uh, football stadium um, re that rehab and, and that's been exciting to see that's another you know piece of our economic development when people are at the games you know our, our restaurants are filled too so there's a lot going on in our downtown and it's very exciting and um, and I love being a part of it all Scout Hall another one Scout Hall is a huge one in fact we're giving an award to, to Scout Hall during our annual dinner so I you know I talk more about that but um, that has been a huge huge you know positive development in our downtown talk about you know you've got multiple restaurants you've got an event venue you've got retail and you've got upper level living spaces so it's huge huge part of enhancing our local economy in an area that sat very vacant and that's you know enhanced our whole that whole entire block in addition to of course what's happened in the past you know the um, the courtyard Marriott was a huge development Marquette you know tower there's been so much positive momentum in our community for for decades and we're really seeing um, the fruits of the labor of the incredible village we have coming to fruition with all this. We're going to do a quick break. Okay. We're going to hit all the events. Sounds great. More coming up with Liz Haynes on Cape Chronicle. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Cape Chronicle. I'm Mike Rennick. We're speaking with Liz Haynes with Old Town Cape. All right, we just uh, we got a really good, passionate message about the mission of Old Town yes. Cape. Let's talk about the events. Absolutely. All right, I know coming up on uh, March 21st, the Old Town Cape Annual Dinner and uh, there's a social hour, uh, a buffet dinner, and it's at the, at the Century Casino Event Center. Yes, yes it is. This is one of our most, if not the most inspirational event we do every year. So this is an opportunity to give out awards to those that are going above and beyond to make our downtown community better. We're giving out seven awards. We've got rehab awards. We've got a volunteer of the year award. We've got some special recognition. I mean, I could go on. It's it's really, really inspiring. We just filmed some awardee videos yesterday and, you know, it, it brought some of us to tears on the staff <laughs> at Old Town Cape just to hear the passion these people have for, um, for their projects. So this year is particularly special because it's the 25th anniversary of Old Town Cape. Um, so we're celebrating that. So the theme this year is celebrating downtown this place matters so we might be debuting we might have a couple surprises at the event since it's our 25 <laughs> year celebration so um, there's a cash bar we're doing a fun bingo scavenger hunt tickets are $50 table of eight for 400 and you can buy tickets by calling the Old Town Cape office at 573-334-8085 or you can go to our Facebook event for um, the link for the online ticket sales but get them quick because the RSVP, RSVP deadline is March 1st that's coming right up okay 
big, huge, massive event really for is. Cape Girardeau is coming with the eclipse yes. on April the 8th and the Old Town Cape Eclipse event will be happening. It absolutely in a familiar will spot. at our Cape Riverfront Market lot. So people know where to go, 35 South Spanish Street. We're so excited. It's a free event. Um, this is the place to be to see the eclipse. So we've it got is. our hotels, our Airbnbs are filled up. So good luck if you're still looking for a place to stay. But <laughs> head on down. Uh, we'll have live, live music by Spacers. We thought that was an appropriate name for, for this event, for this group. Now, is that a real band or is that a <laughs> A real name. band. Okay. All Believe right. it or not, it's a real All band. Right. We, we, they've played at our market before. Okay. We'll have food trucks there. We're going to have yoga in our community garden with Shakti and Free, a local downtown yoga studio. It'll be a block party. We're partnering with the library and with Ebb and Flow. Ebb and Flow is going to have a special Eclipse art display. The library, both of them are going to have drinks. We're going to do face painting, cornhole, a chalk zone for kids. We will have one of a kind Eclipse t shirts for sale, and these are very cool, I must say. And then, of course, we'll have free Eclipse glasses while supplies last to keep everybody safe. Those will go fast. They definitely will, no doubt about Very it. Very fast. Um, so this is, again, on April the 8th, 12 to 3. Eclipse is like supposed to be in that, what, 1.58 yes. p.m. range? Exactly, exactly. Uh, and as you mentioned, Cape Girardeau is a wonderful place to be able to view the eclipse this it, year. It really is. And I want to add that Mike FM is going to be there as well. They will be there. Which is very exciting. They will be there. Very exciting. We appreciate the amazing partnership. Absolutely. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to pick and choose, but I know Tunes at Twilight is always a huge event for you guys. That's, that's a big one. That's really exciting. So that will start up in um, early May, every Friday, starting at 7 p.m. And then we take a break in July because it gets so hot. We'll gear back up in the fall at 630. That's at Ivor Square. We've added face painting and henna tattoos for families that come out. Obviously, free events. Well, we're going to be um, selling Tunes t-shirts. We're going to have merch this year. So that's something new that we're doing that, that people are you know hopefully going to enjoy. We usually have food vendors there as well. You can bring your picnic. Um, you can bring bring wine come just enjoy the, a beautiful evening out and, and hear some great music in our downtown you know having really kind of watched that from the beginning to where it's at today so great to see uh, the, the progression people put on their calendar yes. you know we got to be there it becomes right. the gathering spot right. you know right. for those for those early evening hours it really is it's exciting to see that and yep. then obviously I mentioned uh, before uh, the eclipse being held um, at the Cape Riverfront market mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and that's a huge event, again, that brings people in from all areas to it, be downtown. It really is. And that, again, like you're talking about, it is part of people's uh, weekend tradition. Right. You know, right. it really is. People start their weekend by heading down to the farmer's market. Uh, that kicks off the first Saturday in May, May 4th. At the, it's actually going to kick off at the casino parking lot this year. The rest of the season will be at the normal Cape Riverfront Market lot. This year we're partnering with the Big Muddy uh, River Marathon, um, which will start and end at the casino parking lot. So we're going to have our uh, farmer's market there as well. So that's kind of something exciting and new, that a is. new twist that yeah. we're going to be um, looking forward to. I thought there was a typo <laughs> there for a minute. No. So no, it that's, actually that's, is that's at the, the way casino it is. lot. So, okay. so we're excited to partner because that's that's such a cool event too. So we're glad to be a part of that um, in our downtown. What, what we'll is your vendor list? Uh, are, are, is there a waiting list to be a vendor for, for yes, this? Yes, there is a okay. huge wait. Believe it or not, we have about 100 people on our waiting list for the farmer's market. Wow. So there is certainly a demand for it. Um, so uh, we did have our annual meeting already, and we, we're locking people in right now. Um, but we, a lot of people's favorites, you know, you know, a lot of people know the German cook and the donuts, you know, that, that are regulars that have been there for years uh, sure. uh, should be coming back. Um, and uh, <laughs> we'll, we have some new vendors, though, that we're really excited about since there's so much interest. So, so check that out. Out. Um, we always, of course, have music. This is not just, you know, this is a destination event. We have music. We have demonstrations. We have kids' activities. A new twist this year, we're actually closing Spanish Street, most of Spanish Street there in front of the market lot for most of the season. So that'll make it safer for kids and when you bring your dogs and things like that with not having to worry about traffic. And we can accommodate more booths since we have such a big yeah. waiting list. So we'll right. have more vendors there in the street as well. So, so, so May 4th is the kickoff May and that runs kickoff. through? Through October, through the end of October. So the okay. first Saturday in May through the the last Saturday in October. Okay, and you mentioned the the big Muddy River Marathon. That's an, another event That's that right. has grown and grown and grown. So that continues to uh, to happen. So it really is. Let's see what else do we have here. Oh, your, the the spring litter pickup. 
That's right. You, you talked about the things that you guys do on a daily basis to keep uh, downtown Cape looking yes, sharp, and yes, this is one of those. Absolutely. So that is happening on April 12th, um, and this is part of our design committee and our mission just to make our downtown, as you said, as as beautiful and uh, you know aesthetically pleasing as possible. Um, and so we are going to meet at the Boardman Pavilion at 11 a.m. We'll provide all of the supplies for anyone who wants to join, trash bags and trash picker-uppers and gloves. <laughs> uh, and just for an hour, we, you know, go as far as we can, as fast as we can, and, and pick up trash and make our downtown a cleaner place. So the more the merrier. So we invite the public to, um, to, to join us for that. And then uh, we got about 90 seconds left. Uh, your downtown commercial property open house yeah, is coming is, up in early this, May. This is an exciting event. This is Thursday, May 2nd from 5 to 8 p.m. Again, it's a free event. We've gotten a lot of traction with this event. We open up any vacant property downtown, commercial property that we can. Invite the public to come out. We'll have maps. You can go to all the properties, take a peek, see what's in. We've done this for the past three years. We, a year from the event, we have 50% of the properties that are included either leased or sold. So it's really a, an impressive event. It's a lot of fun to, to get out and see in some of these spaces maybe you've never been inside before. Yeah, we, we said there's a lot of action downtown Cape, but there's there's room for more. That's there's right. buildings that, that uh, someone with the next you know great idea can be on this tour and, and figure out a way to put uh, that space to use. Absolutely. It's exciting to see some of these entrepreneurs' ideas come to fruition. All right, a lot going on. What is the best way someone's like, well, that, that was a lot. Uh, yep. I know you threw out the number for the, for the dinner, right. but what's what's the best way to find out what's happening? You, the best way is go to our social media. So go to Facebook or Instagram. We have all of these events on Facebook. If you're on social media, which most people are, um, we have a separate event for each. There's a link to get tickets for most of these, but it'll, it spells out all of the ideas. You can also go to our website, downtowncapegirardo.com for more information and all the details. All right, Liz, thank you so much. Love thank the passion, you. love the energy. Thank it's good you. to see you again. Always great to see you. Thanks for having me on. Yep, thank you again, Liz. Up next is Dr. Jim Dufek with Southeast Missouri State University. Stay tuned.